Hi, I'm Mark. This is my June review for Virgo Sunshine and Virgo Rising. We have a very exciting month. Uh, we have two of the most important aspects of the year coming exact this month, and we also have um, an eclipse, solar eclipse happening in your 10th house. Um, so there's a lot going on, there's a lot to take in, but there's also a lot of opportunity coming your way. We start off with the Sun making two aspects on the first. Um, the Sun is in your 10th house, makes a conjunction with the North Node and also a, a sextile to uh, Chiron in the 8th. So this is a time when you can uh, transform things, you can change things, and you've got to be ready to go with the flow. Um, these, uh, the Sun is in a mutable sign of Gemini, so you will be able to um, fit in with the flow and go easy with it because you also are a mutable sign. So what does it mean? Well, there could be a change in your destined path, your chosen path. There could be a change of job or career. And there could be a change in, in your status, the way the public sees you. You could be thrust into the limelight or you could um, easily be in a different place in a few weeks' time. Um, the other thing we have to remember with the 10th house is that it's about authority as well. So it's a good time to seek a mentor or an advisor, someone with wisdom, um, because Chiron represents wisdom, who can help you um, to get through this period and make the most of these opportunities. On the second, we have the biggest aspect of the year um, coming into a tight orb and will be exact on the uh, 14th of June. Now, this aspect is a square between Uranus, the planet of rebellion, and Saturn, the planet of structure. Saturn is in your sixth house, so the structure is based around your daily routines and your work and what you do on a regular daily basis. And this is being challenged by Uranus in your ninth house, and the ninth house is of higher wisdom, of your belief. So there may be things that are coming through, Uranus is pushing through, um, wanting you to change these daily routines and structures in your life. So you have to um, accept that and go with this because um, things will have to change. They will change slowly because these signs are slow moving and this aspect lasts for the whole of the year. Uh, it will come exact again at the end of December. Um, so there is time to work with this, but it's slow change, very slow indeed. So just do it bit by bit. Now, for us all, um, this aspect is causing a lot of civil unrest. There's a lot of social justice issues coming up and there's a lot of extreme weather conditions. Um, there's a positive point coming out of this as well. Um, in mythology, the battle of these two um, was a bloody battle and out of it was born Venus or Aphrodite. So this aspect also has a knockoff effect that it raises the status of women. And we saw when this aspect happened last time in the 70s that uh, Mrs Thatcher became the first female prime minister of England. And this time we now have our first um, deputy president in the US who's female. And recently um, there was a Rachel Blackmore won the biggest horse race in England, the Grand Nationals, the first time a woman has won this race. So the, the status of women has been raised by this aspect, and that's a byproduct, but a very positive one. Also, on a second, there's an aspect from Mars in the 11th house to the Black Moon Lilith, who is very close to Uranus. And this could help you shed a light on, on unconscious motivations and also uh, any negativity that's around that you need to clear up. Then on the third, uh, Venus moves into Cancer and immediately makes a positive trine aspect to Jupiter. Now, Venus is moving into your 11th house, Jupiter's in your 7th house. So this is a great time to socialise and be with other people and just enjoy yourself. The Sun makes a positive aspect to Saturn on that day and this can mean that you're very organised. So you may be organising social events and, and get-togethers for other people and you may be the leader in this. Uh, one word of warning on the uh, third as well, there's an aspect that starts and lasts for five days. This is between uh, Mercury and uh, Neptune, who's also in the seventh house. So this aspect can cause um, miscommunications or misunderstandings within communications. This lasts for five days, so just be aware of this when you're in your daily interactions. On the fourth, we have a Mars aspect to Pluto. This is an opposition, 
oppositions are always where you meet things head on. Um, Mars is in your 11th house, so it's good time to work with people. Now this could be the culmination of a project or a group effort that comes to fruition at this time, or there could be a massive power struggle, Pluto in the opposite sign. Um, the thing is with this, you've got to remember you need to work with others. You can't, if you want to go it alone, then you're going to risk um, a big power struggle against everybody. You, you will be on your own. So it's best if there is anything to be, to be sorted or tackled, do it as a group, do it with other people, with colleagues or friends and, and tackle it in that way. Um, then on the 6th, there's an aspect between the Sun and Juno. This is another opposition. And the sun is in your 10th house of career and destiny, and you know is in the 4th house of the house. This is a time when you need to compromise and balance the efforts. Um, and it may be that you, you have family or a partner at home, and you're doing a lot um, in the 10th house of work or, or uh, your destined path, and, and you're going to need to compromise. You're going to need to get the balance. And you probably would be best to take the lead on this. On the 7th, Pluto makes a trine aspect, a more positive aspect to the Black Moon Lilith. So if there are any power struggles that have come up in the last few days, then this is a good time to get insight and to sort them out, deal with them, so that you can bring harmony back in life. Then on the 8th, there's the second biggest aspect of the year. Uh, this is a sextile between Chiron and Saturn. Now, Chiron uh, can be the key because uh, he will link into the Saturn uh, Uranus square we were talking about a little bit earlier and he can bring um, a lot to the table on this. His orbit is between Saturn and Uranus so he can form a bridge between the two. Saturn and Uranus are locked in, in a battle, they're both in fixed signs and neither of them want to give. So Chiron can dance in between the two and perhaps persuade the two sides to come together and talk. Now Chiron will show and give understanding and show light on the subject so that wisdom can be seen uh, to be used in, in, in to the best advantage. Now um, this aspect becomes exact on 24th June and again on the 26th of November. So this is another similar long-running aspect throughout the year and these two together, these two aspects um, set the theme for the year. So in your own chart if there's any healing or wisdom to be shed on the situation then Kara can help you do that and help you heal your own situation. Now with these big aspects um, it, the more involved you are will depend on, on whether you've got personal planets linking into these, these big outer planets. If you haven't then it won't have too much effect on you but if you have personal planets that link in then you'll be very much affected and very much in the thick of it. On the 10th, we have our first solar eclipse of the year. And this one falls in Gemini at 19 degrees. Now, if you have a planet, your sun perhaps, or any other planet between 19 and 25 degrees Virgo, or in fact Pisces or Sagittarius, any of the mutable signs, you will be greatly affected by this. Now, uh, in Gemini, you're going to be bombarded with new information, ideas and connections with this solar eclipse. And this series belongs to uh, the Saras 5 North series, which is renowned for bringing hunches, for bringing dreams, visions, messages through from the unconscious or the psychic realm. So be prepared to be bombarded with all sorts of information and messages. Now these are very important and you must act upon them if you, if you can decipher them correctly. The other thing is, with this uh, eclipse being in your 10th house, it's going to be about your public standing. It's going to heighten your um, profile, so to speak. And it could be a change of direction with your path of destiny and your chosen path, or there could be a change of job or career, but you need to be ready for these changes. Also on the 10th, there's a three-day conjunction between Ceres and Uranus. Now this is also in your ninth house and these two have very different characteristics. Ceres is about how you nurture and look after and care for other people. Uranus is about your independence and in the ninth house it's about the spirit of adventure. So this is a good time when you can work with the two and get a balance between the two. Also on that day there's a conjunction between the Sun and Mercury. Now Mercury is retrograde so maybe a day when you, when you try and explain yourself but people 
may not understand. You might be able to explain yourself very easily, so just be aware of that. You might not be able to express these feelings or things you're working on and going through at the time. Then on the 12th, Mars moves into Leo. Now Leo is your 12th house, so Mars will give energy in a fire sign, but because it's in your 12th house, this is best directed to working behind the scenes. Because in a month or so's time, Mars will come into your sign, and you can really uh, bring things out in the open and utilise that Mars energy. But for now, it's probably best directed behind the scenes. Also on that day, Venus makes uh, two aspects, and Venus is in your uh, 11th house, so this is a, a good time to socialise and be with people and to probably try new things and to um, experiment with, with new ideas that you have, at brainstorming with other people. Relationships are highlighted between the 13th and the 20th. Um, on the 13th we have a square between the Sun and Neptune in your 7th house. Now, at this time you may, you may be in a bit of a dream world, you may have been fantasised about things, but um, if there are issues around relationships, you need to deal with them, you need to deal with the real world. Um, it's okay to have fantasies and dreams, but if there's something that comes up in the real world, you need to deal with it, and deal with it straight away. And on the 20th, Jupiter, who's also in the 7th house, goes retrograde. Now, we can still work with the planets when they retrograde, it's an ideal time to work with them. Now, Jupiter in the seventh house retrograde represents again how we how we deal with relationships. Now is a good time to balance between the uh, what you need and what others need, and get that right. And also, you can work with the um, idea that Jupiter uh, wants to f play fair and be honest and sincere with all dealings with other people. On the twenty first and the twenty third, Venus makes two aspects to outer planets. The first on the 21st is a trine to Neptune. Now this can go um, in several ways and it can be a very creative time. Venus is in the uh, 11th house of friends and colleagues and groups so it could be a time when you can brainstorm and come up with some great ideas um, within a group or friendship situation. Or it could be that you get romantically involved in in a, in a what is a friendship or a colleague at work um, and this may not be a good idea because this is a sort of aspect that can cause a lot of um, illusion and you won't know whether this is this is real or uh, all an illusion. The other aspect is between Venus and Pluto and Pluto is in the fifth house of love and love affairs and now this can be a transformative um, aspect and if you're in a relationship this could change transform that relationship to to make it a lot stronger and a lot better on the other hand it could be detrimental because if uh, you're in a relationship and it's not right there could be power struggles and this could be quite destructive because these energies are very intense on the 21st the sun has moved into cancer and your 11th house. So there'll be a change of emphasis from career and destiny into 11th house matters. Then on 22nd, Mercury goes direct, and this is good news because uh, we don't have to worry about things getting lost or misplaced, and we don't have to worry about misplaced communications either. So things will be a lot clearer. Then on 24th, we have a full moon. And this full moon is in Capricorn, your fellow Earth sign, and it's also in your fifth house. Now, you've been doing a lot of work just lately, you have been uh, really concentrating and doing a lot, and now it's time to ease up a bit. This full moon says it's time to have some fun. Um, and also we have uh, Venus making a positive aspect to the Black Moon Lilith um, on the same day. So they will ensure that you have some excitement and some passionate fun. Uh, the fifth house is about creative expression, whether it's in a love affair or whether it's in in uh, an artistic or creative way, or whether it's with your children, you need to express yourself and, and, and let some of the pent up energy that's developed over the last couple of weeks escape and, and just have generally have a good time. On the 25th, Neptune goes retrograde until December. This is in your seventh house, and the lesson to be learned here is to develop um, loyalty, um, to develop um, a sense of um, compassion with other people, and faithfulness, and also to bring on your spiritual side and develop that, and to use this in, in not only relationships but in 
business dealings as well. On the 27th, Mercury makes a positive aspect to the North Node, but Mercury's in your 12th house. So he doesn't function as well in the 12th house. He will function a lot better when he moves into your first house in a few weeks' time. Um, but you'll be quite thoughtful, quite philosophical with this, and this is a good time to think about how you can enlist the help and guidance of other people so that you can um, use their strength and energy as well to um, propel yourself forward. Then on the 30th, the last day of the month, Mars makes a, a more challenging aspect with um, Saturn because it's an opposition. Now this triggers off um, a T-square with Uranus in your ninth house and this causes a lot of um, unbalance and, and this is a challenging aspect to T-square. But we can learn from this because we need to learn from the empty space. Now the empty space will be Scorpio and your third house. So you need to be very passionate and determined about getting things organised and routine. So you need to concentrate on routine daily matters and not get drawn into that um, T-square um, too much because that will cause a lot of tension, a lot of frustration with Mars in opposition and with the erratic Uranus in square to both planets. This can cause a lot of unrest. So you need to concentrate on that empty space in, in Scorpio and try and make that work for you so that you can look at the problem logically. Um, look at how you can resolve things and then go through with that. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if you'd like to leave me a message, I'd love to hear from you.